Hello and welcome. This is Founder Layroon. Today I'm going to go over some things that will hopefully help people that are new to Fantasy Grounds or even someone who has been away for a while. So um, I'm using Fantasy Grounds version or 4.4.6, the ultimate version, but uh, I want to talk about some troubleshooting, some best practices, some tips, new uh, user data. So one of the first things is after you install Fantasy Grounds, when it's almost done, it will pop up with a firewall setting which will ask you if you want to allow Fantasy Grounds through. If you do see that pop-up, allow that through because if you don't, it's going to block data from Fantasy Grounds and from updating it and from your players. So you want to be careful with that. Uh, whether you're a player or GM, you want to make sure that you are basically getting the, the data to go back and forth. And also antivirus software sometimes looks at the internet access from Fantasy Grounds as a threat. So it'll try to block the data from there to protect your computer. So when you're installing Fantasy Grounds, make sure that you have disk access and that you have enabled or allowed Fantasy Grounds to go through the firewall. Otherwise, you might have some problems down the road uh, getting updates or sharing your data with your players if you intend to play online. So that's a typical issue that comes up. At least one out of every 10 or people that I can tell has had that problem or they know someone on their table that has that issue. The next thing is updates. So right now there are no active updates happening for Fantasy Grounds, but when you do need to update, you can click on check for updates. Normally they post those like every Tuesday, but if you want to update or check for updates for any subscriptions like things for the Forge, if you have any extensions, you can do so. So you won't get a warning for those. They're not activated like the software or the DLC. So you can manually force update this by check for updates and you actually just let it cruise through your library and it will check on the server to see if there's any new updates. This generally doesn't take too long if you don't have a lot of content. However, if you are new or you haven't played in a while and you got a lot of stuff, it will take, you know, 10-15 minutes to download and update everything. Um, if you're brand spanking new and you have a whole bunch of content you want to download or stuff that you've purchased. So like if you went out and bought a whole collection or something, it might take it a little longer to update it because it'll update this updater program first usually, and then it will update the base of Fantasy Grounds, and then it will pull in all your DLC. So that takes a little while, but once it's already on your computer, it doesn't take as long normally, unless there's a huge update going on. And generally, there's not going to be anything really related, but as you can see, some of my Forge subscriptions are updating. So this is stuff that I've subscribed to from the Fantasy Grounds Forge, which is where the extensions, community-made mods, and, and that sort of thing reside. That's something that you're going to have to play with and get used to. Uh, I don't recommend getting a bunch of those at the beginning. So if you're new to Fantasy Grounds, um, try to stay away from all of those extensions and things that you probably don't need right away. I mean, they do help make life a little easier but you kind of have to understand the limitations and some of the things that can or can't be done with the program. So introduce those a little at a time is kind of what I'm saying. And yes, it does help with some processes to make things quicker and easier, but some things are kind of over the top or they might clash. They might actually have an issue. So be careful with extensions. So once you have all that stuff, there is something you want to do if you're going to start a campaign or you're going to work on a project. So if I come over here to where it shows this folder up here on the top left corner. I can open that up. This takes you to the back end of Fantasy Grounds. So this is where you're going to store your campaigns, which is where all of your sessions are saved. You have extensions where if you're going to use your own extensions or third party, sometimes you'll download those and manually put them in this extension folder. But if you're getting them off the forge, you don't have to do that. It'll actually pull those in for you. So it's kind of up to you. And then you have an images folder where you can custom import your own maps, your own tokens, you know, that sort of thing. But then you have a tokens folder, you have a portraits folder, and a modules folder. So the modules are where third-party modules would be stored, such as stuff from the DMs Guild or stuff that you're buying. And occasionally you'll get a third-party website that still distributes as a mod file, but not very many. 
And then, of course, you have the vault. So the vault is where all of your data is stored for the official content. So this stuff in here is actually very protected. It's basically part of the system, and these are encoded so that they, you, know, you can't take them apart. So these are just all your official content. And I sorted these by size. A couple of these are pretty good size files. Like they give you a basic idea of how big these things are. Some of these are rule set. Some of these are add on. Some of these are DLC. But if you ever have a problem with Fantasy Grounds and it's really screwed up or it won't update or something like that, if you can find the data file, the DAT file that is associated with the problem, like let's say you have a Wizards of the Coast module that's not working, if you can find the file name, you can actually delete this particular DAT file and then re-update Fantasy Grounds to help clear that issue. So that's something you can do um, as a troubleshooting tip. But I would save that for the very end of your rope for option. When you have a campaign, which is basically your games that you're running, I'll just say I have this Oracle of Three game here. So if I double-click that, you're going to see all these session logs. So these are your past sessions that I had created when I actually went into Fantasy Grounds and they all have different dates on them. So it starts from the earliest date all the way to present. So this goes all the way back to 11-13-2021, but the most recent was 11-25 Thanksgiving. So when this corrupts, it'll generally um, give you errors when you're inside of your campaign. And that's generally caused because one of a couple things. So it could be an antivirus interfering with the file saving or you don't have file access. Or in most cases, it's because you closed out a Fantasy Grounds the improper way or maybe it crashed on you. Whatever it may be, if you lose this database XML file to corruption, you can rename the last known working thing. So this DB session, whatever this is, this is a, from a previous date. This goes back to March in my case. So that would suck to lose all that work in between there. However, the more you use Fantasy Grounds and the more you save, the more save points you'll have. So you might lose a little bit of work, but not everything. So if you boot up Fantasy Grounds, it's giving you all kinds of errors or you're missing your settings and such. It could be that you're database XML file is corrupted, which means that it wasn't able to save properly and the information on there is missing or it's corrupted. So you can take one of these older sessions, rename it as dbxml and maybe take this file the original and store it somewhere else. And that would give you at least uh, get you back to where you were. So this is an important step troubleshooting thing if you ever run into that issue. The key is to actually exit Fantasy Grounds properly. Now, if you want to actually back up Fantasy Grounds and you want to save all your work and all the stuff that goes with it, you can technically save this folder here, which is your campaigns folder. And then if you want, you could do extensions, images, modules, portraits, tokens, that sort of thing. Uh, you can back all that up and then reinstall Fantasy Grounds or update it and then put those back in. So if, like, if you're transferring to another computer, those are pretty much the only folders that you really have to back up. So campaigns, images extensions, modules, portraits, tokens. Those are the most important aspect of it. You could do the vault if you don't want to spend all that time updating or restarting Fantasy Grounds. You might be able to copy that over and it would just update them instead of re-downloading all of them. But other than that, those are the only folders that you need to store. Uh, if you have any saved screenshots or any kind of uh, logs here, you can do that. Or if you want to, you can back up the entire folder. It reinstall Fantasy Grounds and then take that particular save and put it on a hard drive somewhere else or you can put it on your storage drive or a thumb drive. That way, if anything happens, you can reinstall Fantasy Grounds and just dump everything back on top of it, update it again just in case anything was you know missing or updated and then you're back up and running. So make sure you make a backup of, at the minimum, I would back up the, the campaign data the modules, and your extensions. Probably that's the minimum. If you can do without the artwork, you can you can kind of get away from portraits, tokens, and images, and those are generally larger anyways. But the main things is to have your images available if you use custom images. So that's another thing you got to think about. So if you only use the store-bought material, you won't really need that. But if you went ahead and imported your own maps and did a bunch of custom work and made your own tokens and stuff, you're going to want to save those too. So these are just some tips on how to back this up. 
don't use an automatic backup because it will corrupt the database XML file. It'll put something in there with a different date or the file names might change between the time it backs up and the time that you're uh, working on your game. So you got or playing in the game. So you got to be careful with automatic backups. It's better just to manually take those folders, copy them, label them, put them somewhere safe. And, and that's the best way to back it up. Nothing gets saved to the Fantasy Crown's cloud. The cloud is only for connecting. It doesn't save your game sessions. It doesn't save your files. It doesn't save anything else other than your credentials and your connectivity settings. That's it. It doesn't do much else. So that's a misnomer. A lot of people think because you're using a cloud, it's on a server. It's not. Everything is hosted on the host computer or the player. There's no in-between. So just kind of let you know that. So now let's go back to Fantasy Grounds. You can load an existing campaign if you already have one. Or you can create a new campaign. So creating a new campaign is starting fresh. If I wanted to pick a rule set, I can go, I'll just pick D&D just for the sake of it. I'll give this a name. So I'm going to put D&D in front of it, especially if you're going to use more than one rule set. So if you've got rule sets that are numerous and you're going to play Pathfinder and all these other ones, you might want to lead it with the name for a, a naming convention because when you go in the back end to look at your campaign folders, it's going to be hard to detect which ones are which. So what I'm going to do is call this tutorial. So D&D 5e tutorial, and then I'm just going to put FGU. So I have a name for it. Now over here on the right, this is how you set up your connectivity for your players if you're going to be the host. So there's a server type. So right now it's set to cloud and public. So what I would do is if you're going to do a session by yourself and you have no intent of, of connecting with anyone, you can just set this to LAN, which is your local area network. It's on port 1802. If you don't have any other computers in your house or wherever you're at, university or whatever, you can leave that blank. You don't have to put a password. If you're on the cloud and you're on public, you're going to want a password protect. So I'm just going to put password as my password. It's not a good password. I'll just say no pass. And then if you want it to be private, in other words, you don't want your game to be listed in the public view, you can click this private. So what that means is anyone with a password that knows your game master name can connect to you through the cloud, but it just won't be visible in that list. So maybe when you first start playing, you keep it on the public open area so your players can find a table. But once you've got the game set up and everything's good, then you can click that over to private. So that just means that the players can connect with their history or they'll know your GM name. So that's how that works. Um, here are all the different extensions. If you want to enable any of these, this would be the time to do it. Just kind of limit how many you use. But I'm going to use the old Fantasy Grounds leather theme. This is an, an official extension or, or an add-on, so I'm not too worried about that. Once in a while, the themes kind of glitch and stuff, but they're usually pretty decent. And then I have one or two others that I use. So that one just kind of changes the way Fantasy Grounds looks. And then there's another one that I use, which is just a, a font. So when I come in here, I want to have a little bit bigger font in the chat window because the text or the fonts are a little bit small. So that's why I use that. Otherwise, I wouldn't even load it. But this is a font that you can get for free. And a lot of these extensions are free or very low cost on the Fanscrowns Forge. So those are the two main ones that I had a theme. And you don't have to have a theme. A lot of the, the rule sets don't need a theme. They already have one. But if you want something different, they're there. And a lot of these are, or half of these themes are paid, and the other half are part of Fantasy Ground. It really depends on what you're doing. So those are basically the two. I use a font, and then I use maybe a theme. And then there's one other that I'm not going to necessarily recommend, but I use it for if I have a player who's going to be running a character that has a companion animal, such as a druid, or some sort of um, situation like that, and it's called the friend zone. And the reason I use that is it gives you the ability to set that up so that the players can control the NPC stat block for the animal companion and those sort of things. Or it could be a robot or whatever situation you're in. But that's the only reason I would use that. And I only turn it on when I have a player like that. So that's another thing is you don't have to have all these on for every session, but you do have to remember which ones to turn on or off. So there's some that you don't need 
and there's some that you might need depending on the situation and the table you're on. But here's the friend zone. That's a free extension. That's just one I recommended if I was someone who kind of already knew Fantasy Grounds. If you're not sure how to use Fantasy Grounds, you can avoid that for a while until you have that necessity. So there are lots of things on here or quality of life fixes, but you won't really know what those fixes are and how they impact your game or if you even need them until you start playing. So that's why I recommend you start with the basics and build from there. So once you have your settings, you have your rule set picked, you give it a name, you set up your cloud settings. So I'm going to go back to LAN because I don't plan on being online at all, at least not out in the public. And then I'm going to hit start. So that's basically starting a new campaign, setting up your new session. And this is kind of the workflow that you would go through. So we kind of covered going over backups, some things to look for, like when you install to make sure that the firewall or that your antivirus has an exception to allow Fantasy Grounds to communicate back and forth online. Otherwise, it can cause issues down the road. Like it might work for you locally, but then when your players try to connect, it may not allow them to connect. Or your players may have the same issue where they've installed Fantasy Grounds, but they dismissed or clicked out of the firewall settings so they weren't sure what it was or it didn't come up at all. Sometimes that happens. And then in that case, they need to go in and potentially add an exception to their firewall and or add something to their exceptions for the uh, antivirus. 